Cannabis Talk 2020. Coming at you. Thanks for tuning in, friends. Hello and namaste. Today is Wednesday, February 9th. It's literally 419. I can't not play the actual old school intro right now because it literally fits on time. Hey. It's 4.19. Do you have a minute? Good. Then let's pack a bowl. Because it's time for Cannabis Talk. That's right, I'm your host, the Encourager Moses Zeppo. If you've been following along with this batch of uploads, you may have just caught a little bit of a sidebar over there to microfiction land. Fan fiction, microfiction, literary fiction. Dare I use the term? Um, I am a mad scientist of too many ideas, not enough time to type them out. And having had a podcast of my own for three years now, and realizing that, uh, ironically, if I can get if I can get the podcast to a place where there's a large enough audience that monetizing it means it pays my way to be clear to do it full-time all the time, which wouldn't take a lot, you guys, if you think about it. I'm not soliciting your likes and or support, although I guess, I don't know, I'm paranoid. I'm going to do an, ep- an episode. I'm seriously going to, like, read the EULA. So hang tight for that. That'll be fun. Uh, I don't think that that would get me in trouble, right? I think it'd be actually considered doing very good due diligence to read the EULA of the platform that I'm using to prepare and distribute the podcast that I hope to monetize and then turn viral enough that I can, like, woohoo, afford to work from home and make podcasts and other content, including finish writing the books that are going to be, like, Harry Potter level. There's going to be, they're going to, someone's going to buy the thing and we're going to build a roller coaster land of these books because it's going to be awesome. It's all trapped in my head. That Maya Angelou quote from earlier, spot on. Couldn't quote it at you now. It has fallen from my mind. Uh, But uh, welcome to uh, the actual sweetheart moment of 420. We just talked right through it. Apologies. Cheers. If you've never tuned in to the show before, I like to always ask myself, like, what the fuck is somebody going to think if they've never tuned into this show before? And then this is this today, whatever I'm rambling about right now is the first thing somebody uh, hears or, you know, encounters for the podcast. Uh, Welcome. Sorry for the chaotic crazy vibe but you get you get a sense of it it's all interconnected the literature the short fiction uh the collaborative development the the self notation about like editing in post that you listen to because it hasn't been edited in post yet it's all part of the world and the narrative so just strap in buckle up hang tight and uh and try to engage with commentary questions and or, you know, feedback. And eventually it all makes sense. It's my show. I'll go in spirals if I want to. Before we go any further, ring the bell that isn't sitting here at my desk anymore. It's way over there. 
at that uh, side thing, library, which just looks really cool. I can't wait to share a picture of that. It looks awesome. But it's way over there, and I can't ding it the way I used to. And I don't want to keep it right here, because otherwise it's just in the way all the time. Uh, what a horrible dilemma. I'll have to move things around a little more often. But uh, ding, ding, ding. In celebration of the fact that February of 2020, as of Wednesday, Wednesday, the 19th, has so far reached uh, a really strong and momentous and very synchronicitous 444 number in downloads. Uh, and if you've been intrigued by that part of the podcast, Overshare, I'll just put it to you this way, guys. As audience, you guys, whether you uh, realize it or not, you're like investors in my product, in my career of entertaining you by, uh, you know, talking about stuff. And on Cannabis Talk, we're supposed to talk about cannabis. So let's get to that. I didn't pull any things up. I just wanted a long... I just realized what time it was and went, ooh, ah, better get on it. But luckily, there is now a really cool uh, and very strong cannabis reporting journalism web of things. Asterix, sidebar, for anyone who was hoping to catch like live commentary about the uh, Democratic debate tonight, Bloomberg versus everyone else... Ding, ding, ding. Uh, tune in a little later, because I'm going to go, hopefully, last I checked, it was two hours before it started. And it has not been two hours yet. Probably at like five o'clock is when the, the things are going to happen. And then I'm going to go, like, observe them. And then I'll talk about it. If not tonight, tomorrow. There's change a brewing in the cannabis industry world. And as uh, one news agency seems to be reporting, uh, California might be considering a recommendation to conduct a massive uh, working over of cannabis-related state law, which we just ever so recently got on the books. As always, friends, know your context. Whether I sound ill-prepared or not on any given episode about any given topic, I assure you that before the project's done and over with, I will have tried to double back and uh, revisit it and talk about it again in whatever more updated context and actually do a bit of that, like, legwork. Uh, and then I invite you to, like, submit links and whatnot on all my social medias uh, for future re-referencing. But always, 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 as a rule of thumb, for your own well-being, please... Uh, for the love of all that is good and and divine and whatever, whatever you think is, is holy, doesn't matter whom, doesn't matter where, doesn't matter, as long as it's good and divine, in the name of all that, please, A, try to stay informed about what the law is in your state. Try to not be in violation of it. Uh, cannabis heals. And it was wrongly persecuted for a very long time by the law being corrupt. And we're trying to overturn that. So if you keep giving them any of you, I sound so accusational. I need a new way of pitching that. I need to write a story in which two, you know, cannabis enthusiasts that are like loosely associated don't really know each other very well and then have to spend a lot of time, you know, in each other's worlds and the the way one manages uh, you know their relationship and their activities and their situational uh, choices around cannabis and other things 
would drive the other one crazy. Like, like a like an odd couple of cannabis and taking it to like you know cops and robbers comedy. Uh, I don't. Know, although is is a breaking the law comedy movie even doable anymore? Post twenty twenty. I guess, right? I'm not, I'm not, do I come off as a moral prude sometimes? I think I just worry about the kids, you guys. I worry about the young, I worry about the damage that was done to me growing up watching movies I thought were well-intentioned and not too weird, but that were kind of like, you know, who knows? Uh, But, you know, the warning signs are all there. Look for yourself. Go to a repository of real news and cross-check it with articles in, you know, whatever your favorite cannabis alternative media sources are. And do an extensive shirt. Search. Shirt. Search shirt? We should invent that. And then the shirt just tells you directly what you've searched. Uh, Because... Big business is big business. And in in the archetypes of humanity, we know how that goes, right, friends? We know how that works out. And uh, we want to make sure that does, that doesn't turn into something as bizarre. Right? As reported by The Sun, which may or may not be a psyopic exaggeration, uh, smear campaign because isn't the sun in England what do they know but they have a, from it's from a year ago but it, it shows up right in the middle of this page because you know it's showing up articles from a year ago maybe this particular search tab doesn't pull any new things anymore correctly I, I did a bunch of you know spin these subjects when I first got uh, this computer and in this particular news app, it uh, this is what I see when I open it up and I click on Cannabis in California. I get the Sun article from a year from a year ago, claiming that despite the uh, the new uh, recreational uh, approval, uh, there seems to be a black market surge. And I hear I have heard things here on the ground that indeed there probably was a bit of that and a bit of gray area market surge and a bit of above the board market surge that was a bit too much and toxic perhaps <clears throat> question mark question mark question mark i don't know i'm asking questions folks these are conversations we have to have and that we have to build consensus on about in terms of how do we lead our communities into a future where cannabis can heal the people that it needs to heal. And it isn't something that is used to scare kids or to blame for our kids' bad life choices. Let's face it. Human beings are human beings, right? Some of them kids are making bad life choices because they are spawn of Satan themselves. No offense to any particular kid out there. Some of them are making horrible choices because their parents are evil and neglectful. Some of those kids are doing making horrible choices because they fell into with the wrong crowd and are being manipulated. And you know, some of them are making horrible choices because they are prone to just making horrible choices. Some of them are making horrible choices because some evil person is manipulating them. Some of them are making horrible choices because. Something within is irreconcilably broken and or misguided and, and guide in hurtling them down a dark path almost as if fated to be so. Who knows, right? Like, as a human being, I'm not trying to excuse anything. I'm saying let's not get caught up in the wrong business, right? Let's not get caught up in the wrong... I see a lot of judging of people and not a lot of healing of people and a lot of talking about what people need out there in the real world people saying what they think and here we are 
on one of my show's sub-segments where I really open up. When I was your age, how old are you? Uh, well, when I was that age, there wasn't even an internet yet. We just had to actually think about things because we read about them in a magazine or in a book or in a underground publication. Dun, dun, dun. Insert mystery music crescendo here. Uh, I wasn't smoking weed as a kid. I'll tell you that. And I was this weird out of my mother's blessed womb. I tell you, friends. And, uh... We, as a species, can do many things with the opportunities at our disposal. I choose to make art that's curiously self-recursive and trapped in an echo chamber of itself, if that makes any sense. I haven't actually started doing any of the gramophone reenactments yet as a meta note. This is all just like three years worth of warm-up practice that I considered, A, getting used to doing a podcast so I could just like get used to doing it and not feel daunted, and B, uh, testing the waters on whether or not it would catch on and people would start listening and it seems like people do people have people started and see um experimenting with ways to do it differently and the same and uh yeah really testing the boundaries of saying ah fuck it post can start in a couple of years it doesn't have to start next weekend it's been a couple of years now, folks. Post is going to start, and I'm happy to ex- excited and a little a- antithetical. I might not do it tonight, but because dang it, I kind of really want to watch the debate now. But I also sort of just want to not watch it and see what the pandemonium comes out. But I want to. Oh, I I also want to see it and be live tweeting it. And I've got to get going because it's probably going to start if it hasn't already. I don't see it. Ooh, let's see. Are there any headlines? Uh from French. Laundry to cannabis. Something about a farm that all the different things it did, but I, I thought I clicked on it and I thought it was going to load and then it didn't. Today. Oh, yeah. 2,000 plus more. I don't know what the latest number, but I heard there was been an update as of late last night. 2,000 plus or more uh, former Department of Justice lawyers and employees and associates uh, uh, employ- and including I guess current ones and just Republicans in general now as, re- as the headline that Politico has up at the top of the Today page on my news app um, pleading with Trump to leave Barr alone and, oh but the, the other one I, that was from memory 2000 I heard, and please don't sue me. I might be wrong. I'm not trying to, uh, you know, be rude to anybody. But uh, I heard, I read somewhere yesterday on Twitter that it was up to 2,000 uh, lawyers that worked for the D- Department of Justice or th- something like that, all pleading for Barr, Bill Barr, to step down. Just like, please, dude, just resign. Like, resign. It's you're you're making a mess of it. It's just too much corruption in reaction to the failure to evict him from his office for corruption. So now you're all being all corrupt in a dumb, obviously corrupt. What is this Dick Tracy comic book kind of way? No offense, not casting aspersions, just expressing one of the many wild opinions of America, real life Trumptopia that I've heard expressed. And I can't help but giggle and feel a little bit like it, you know? A little bit like, "Uh uh-huh. Especially the more it just goes sideways.
Well, there's probably more newsy things to talk about uh, for cannabinoidal news. But I'd like to uh, put in a pitch for an idea. I want to do a special project, right? Because as of right now, to the best of my understanding, in California, everybody has the right, everybody, because it's now recreational, you have the right to grow it like tomatoes in your yard. Now, don't be stupid and grow it in a place that will offend your neighbors. That's the limit of the law. Like, don't grow it in such a way that it'll annoy or disturb or intrude on your neighbors. So, but that means we can all grow it in our garage, in a grow tent, or in, uh, the, if, you, if you're lucky and you've got a laundry room, right? Now, I'm probably really late to the party. But probably, I think, so are many other people, right? And there are tough lessons to learn there. Here are some insight things. Some, like, semi-amateur, semi-pro tips. One, skip all the nonsense about what kind and size of grow tent and what kind and size of pots. Get the basic, I think it's like 64 inch tall, like no more than like 11 or 12 inch wide, um, you know, small. It looks like a closet. Like if it was a, if it was anything else, you'd think it was a hanger full of clothes. You know, like theater people and movie uh, set people know what I'm talking about. It looks like a square hanger box on wheels. Um, and uh, two pots of the, I think... They are the 10-gallon ones or five. Don't, and I don't mean pots. I mean air pots, like the basket pots. Like the good, strong felt. I think it's felt. It Don't get weird plastic webbing things. Don't do the bucket. The bucket system, I thought for a little while, was super great. But honestly, um, a bucket drainage system, drainage, basically kind of a good idea. But the root system just leaches plastic. And it makes your plant taste weird, I think. I tried a couple of years worth of experience in, you know, privacy of my own home from, not a couple of years, from whenever we uh, legalized. I've done a couple of cycles of trying to grow some plants from seedlings. Um, and before that, while it was medicinal and on my license, uh, I was allowed to grow, a, you know, a limited number and I always grew way below that number. Uh, so I've learned and. You know, there's a lot of hard lessons you can learn, like with any plant. If you don't know how to keep a plant alive in your house, then you should start small and like zen your way up to this. But uh, I hope in the near future to actually finally do that project that I always meant to do, which is like sprout a couple seeds and explain my setup in like picture slides but do a podcast about it and then like have like the slideshow pictures available somewhere on the interwebs um, for you dear fun listeners. I'm feeling amped up and ready to do it in that Judaism future. Uh, stick with me. My story gets better. But for right now, a brief musical interlude to just shake things up and clear the, the mental attitude. As always, namaste. And thanks for welcoming, welcoming me. Is that... Welcome. Thank you for your hospitality in your brain. Cannabis Talk! A special 420 themed segment of the Almost Daily Zencast.
the show goes on. The political parties keep political party dicking each other. The ridicule and shame propaganda mudslinging rages like crazy. I'm all paranoid because I'm trying to make like this side hustle hobby into my main straight hustle day job, if possible. With your guys' help, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, say no more. And actually generate authentic, original content that's all mine. Don't steal my ideas, you guys. Those short story segments that I just dropped, if you haven't listened to them yet and you skipped ahead to see what I talked about here where it wasn't a short story, I humbly invite you to please, please do go and listen because i kind of proud of how they turned out. I think they turned out pretty well for sort of like cobbling them together and improv them a little bit, inspired by something else that I wrote. Actually, of all the bits that I posted that are obviously short story uh, content or, you know, like narrative literature content being read to you, which one of those do you think was written already and finished and just being read? And which one of those do you think was improvised and made up on the spot? Forever on, I want an ongoing vote poll to exist somewhere here around the, like, just tally up, everybody just vote which one is which. I want to see uh, how it turns out. I'd be, I'd be uh, intrigued. Uh, yeah, because I'm going to do more of that. There's actually quite a few books that I'm not going to read from right now because, uh, you know, I just packed a bowl and stuff and my voice is going. And it's a bad idea. I shouldn't smoke weed and do a podcast at the same time because, you know, I should, like, let my vocal cords relax and recover from all the heat. That's hilarious. I'm, like, scanning through tabs and on, um, I clicked away from Cannabis News and I went to Politico because they seemed pretty, pretty, uh nonpartisan and just about what's going on with politics. And I see Sheldon Adelson's name uh, and fundraiser and GOP and the word mega donor. And I think it's intriguing, right? Like the right freaks out about George Soros, but they, uh, they don't get that Sheldon Adelson over here is the same kind of crazy that, that organizes too much and pays way too much dark money into, you know, money and politics. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge, say no more, say no more. Um, what a mess we're in, man. It's overwhelming. Right this hot second, like, I don't even know. Like, what does PolitiFact got? I'm going to click over to PolitiFact. PolitiFact answers the Senate impeachment question. Okay. Fact-checking Donald Trump's campaign stump speech. Ooh. Ooh. Fact-checking Pete Buttigieg's as Fox News town hall in Iowa. Ooh. See? Bipartisan, nonpartisan. Fact-checking Amy Klobuchar and water. That's awesome. Fact-checking needs more fact-checkers. Sign up at your fact-checking office. Join the front lines. Become a fact-checker. Wouldn't that be cool? I just kind of like went off on a tangent based on what I saw there. But imagine a world where fact checking is a job and you got to sit, you clock in, in like a retro roaring twenties sort of office, you know, steampunk, cyberpunk. It's a, it's all a hologram. It's all an illusion. It's all computers, super augmented and busy being computers while also doubling as retro antique cyber furniture and uh your job is to fact check the crazy but also to sort of keep all the crazy that is fake that is supposed to be real enforced because there's a deep double psyop going on yeah near dystopian right like proto cyber Trumptopia land. Uh, oh, I should unwind a bit about, about that. Uh, I was saying, I'm going to say, 
I think I'm going to spin off a couple of different side podcast shows. Inspired by the incorrigible Mr. Zeppo's studio of actors, Actoring Studio, which may or may not be its current working title, but that's a good one. I should remember that. And when I come back and find this audio again, I should clip it and use it for future promos. Uh, that little sidebar, if you haven't, if you haven't listened to it, just hop on over to my Sprecher profile page. Click on podcast shows and you'll see that it's the number two show on my page out of two shows. Actually, let's go look. It's gotten some amount of uh, listening to. It's got three episodes and it's it's actually titled Inside the Zeppos Possessive plur- Possessive S Studio of actors actoring. I kind of like the thing I just said now. A second ago. It's better. Or it's anyways, it's part of the gig now. It's part of the funny. Okay, it's bl- plug, it's blurb is a podcast of practical real life studio advice from the incorrigible Mr. Zeppo. And I've got three like beta episodes that I, uh, someone helped me do by reenacting, by also working on an audition monologue that they really wanted to learn. So we did that, and from that, I just, like, created the show. I'm going to keep doing that as a way to verbally rough draft my own theoretical, fictional... If the incorrigible Mr. Zeppo was a famous theater director uh, in some world, right? And he wrote a book about all the things he had learned. And I don't know if I'm going to give it, uh, give him a secret identity name to use as the studio, the actual studio instead of Zeppo's studio. Uh, But for right now, it just is what it is. It's like, I might, I might break meta by being too meta and like being Mr. Zeppo outside of Mr. Zeppo and inside of Mr. Zeppo's roles as other people when it's Mr. Zeppo it's always Mr. Zeppo I don't know I don't know if that'll work but in in context the actors studio of actors actoring studio is about what actors really do so that's a spin-off show right it's only got like a three-part intro beta episode and can i see stats it's got zero downloads so no one's downloaded it i don't know that i've set up it's distributing have i distributed it did it did it no i haven't it's only on sprecher that's why it's got zero downloads i could probably distribute it on apple podcasts and all the rest i should but i'm gonna leave it there only on sprecher so it's a sprecher.com exclusive folks Come on down. Visit Sprecher.com exclusively. Slash Mr. Zeppo. No, don't include exclusive, exclusively in the address. The address is Sprecher.com forward slash show forward slash inside dash Zeppos dash studio dash of dash actors dash actoring. That's the link to the show. It's a comedy awesome show. Um, I mean... I'm, what I'd love to do is actually have a dance studio let me u- that I could use you know, and a- access to a, a, or build one in, in my own private home uh, if I were going to like work from home and invite actors out to my private residence to then study actoring with me. And, and that's the imaginary context, right? Like if I did. If I had, if I had a private acting studio in my home and I invited actors, uh, professional ones, semi-professional ones, and amateur ones, dirt poor ones, and celebrities alike, you just have to, you know, pass the screening test and be, you know, a background check and blah, blah, blah. You have to be not a threat or danger to yourself, society, or especially me. Because it's got to be a safe space. And then I would teach... The fundamentals of actor, 
like best practices for being a student of the theater. If you're going to go to acting school, these are the things you want to show up knowing so that you're not an idiot and that you actually impress your acting teacher. If you are 50 years old and you want to bust into the movie industry, here's some fundamental things you can do in your own home, but you got to treat it like you're in New York in a Broadway dance studio and this person, you know, and this is all like $100,000 you know, an hour time. Because that's the kind of discipline that's expected, right? Professional theater, you're ultimately talking about a room in which we're being indulgent, almost luxurious, with our pretend emotions and our pretend tactics, our pretend playing, so we can say something just the right way. That the audience wants to hear more, right? That's what acting is. What is acting? What is acting? I act you. Actoring is this. Making the audience giggle. Making the audience guffaw. Making the audience want more. Just like writing a book. It can be a big book, a long book, a thin book, a serious book, a chapter book, an all-at-one-go book, an absurdist book. An episodic, inside out, the typography starts to fuck with your brain because it goes around the margins and then spirals out of control and turns into one word at a time. And it's like, what the fuck is going on? It makes your dreams go weird kind of thing. It doesn't matter. As long as you make... I mean, it does matter, right? It, whatever you choose is what makes it you. But whatever you choose should also make the audience want to hear more. And if it doesn't, if it puts them off, then in new tactic. No judgment, safe space, new tactic. It's that kind of talking and that kind of actual real life theater experience because I do, in real life, knock on wood, may God strike me dead if I'm lying, in real life I have 20 plus years worth of real, professional, practical experience in and out of the development process from various perspectives and various points of view up to and including being the actor developing new content with a collaborative team of people developing someone else's preferred vision of what that new content should be and wanting to be the director that develops my own new content with a team of actors right the vision for what i would love to be able to achieve once i'm building an empire is to have my own, you know, Royal Shakespeare Theater and Dance Company of like a hundred, a troupe of 120 people that it, that could be a ballet troupe dance, but a, a team, but also a reality TV show performance invent stagecraft team. And, uh, you know, boom, make epic theater. But that is super Batman gothic expensive, right? Like that's some Bruce Wayne kind of bullshit. Which is why I'm going to write a book about someone who does that instead. And tell you about it on the podcast as I write the story. Thanks for tuning in. This has been today's episodes of Cannabis Talk and uh, readings from short stories of my own making and studios actoring actoring. All mishmash together into one combo episode. Until next time. This has been your humble host, the incorrigible Mr. Zeppo, hoping I don't hit the wrong button on the way out. Warning. This podcast contains material that may or may not be considered appropriate for the average Trumptopian household. Listen at your own risk to unauthorized and explicit reading. Disclaimer. All rights to literature referenced are retained by appropriate entities and no infringement is intended. The reading of any and all literary materials referenced herein is done expressly 
for the altruistic purpose of genuinely facilitating the species-wide pineal gland activating third eye opening transcendent spiritual enlightenment of all of humanity. Any and all opinions expressed herein are exclusively those of the imaginary talk show host, the incorrigible Mr. Zeppo. And now, brace yourselves for unauthorized and explicit reading. Existing scientific research on the value of materialism yields clear and consistent findings. People who are highly focused on materialistic values have lower personal well-being and psychological health than those who believe that materialistic pursuits are relatively unimportant. These relationships have been documented in samples of people ranging from the wealthy to the poor, from teenagers to the elderly, and from Australians to South Koreans. That is the first thing that jumped out at me when I picked up this book that I've owned for quite some time. It's page 7 from the chapter entitled Principles of Contemplative Science. And the title of this book is called Contemplative Science, Where Buddhism and Neuroscience Converge by B. Allen Wallace. It is crucial to recognize that individual psychological flourishing is not something that can be cultivated without any relation to others. We do not exist independently from others, so our well-being cannot arise independently of others either. We must take into account the well-being of those around us. Profound words. And um, this is a book that I'm like end of the world prepping with, sort of. And by that I mean in the fiction that I'm writing, I'm going to reference this book as a real-life artifact and have the... Uh, the uh, characters discuss it and analyze it and debate it. I'm going to have people have it in common. And there's a list of books like that, which is why this segment of this podcast, the unauthorized and explicit readings, is uh, expressly about doing that, which I think, you know, I might technically not supposed to be doing. But wink, wink, nudge, nudge, say no more, say no more. I do... Waving the ban of both fan fiction, in other words, I'm writing a fan fiction work in which all these books must exist. It is central to the universe to exist, that these books exist in them. Therefore, fan fiction license gives me license to write about, talk about, discuss these. And me, as a character within the fan fiction, saying to them on my underground um slightly not in accordance with some things in the, perhaps, but I'm not aware of it yet because I haven't had time to research completely, depending on time frame and historical context. Uh, <clears throat> where was I? Oh, this is me asking entities that hold royalties to these properties for permission to include for the purposes of uh, the telling of my own original narrative literary content uh, your object as an artifact, and occasionally reference and read from it, because I think you might like this really groovy reason. And I shit you not. This is 100% Scout's Honor. Ooh, too soon? Um, sorry, bad joke. Uh, I mm, Complicated joke. Uh, I was temporarily in the Boy Scouts. Nothing untoward was ever done to me while I was in the Boy Scouts, but all this horrible news and it going under is bad, uh, bad being revealed to itself. The world is full of that sort of thing lurking everywhere, uh, and I don't want to make too much commentary about it. Uh, and I take 
the idea of honor seriously. So when I say scout's honor, I mean all the best and none of the gross uh, recent uh, new revelations, etc., etc., etc. But on whatever you'd like me to pledge, I swear to you, stack of Bibles, I will put either hand, left or right, which one you want, both, neither. Stack of uh, which in, which in your favorite book that's the you know a religious thing or otherwise, uh, and you want me to put my hand on it and swear to you, stare you in the face, in the eye, author of this book, lawyer of the uh, author of this book, whatever. This book that I'm holding in my hand belongs on this very short list of books that I curate for myself and in it, for like life or death purposes, I argue, should be curated for perpetuity is an archivist for the well-being of humankind into the future for as long as this information can be carried forth. Why? Some books might be considered important. Some books might be considered life-changing. I would, in a post-apocalypse survival scenario, insert your favorite apocalypse in the gap and move forward. Survived it. It's over. The bad guys are gone. Now we must rebuild. There's enough of us. What do you bring to the table? I bring the preservation of these books that in them contain what really matters more than politics, no offense to politicians, and war, no offense to the war profiteers who are just addicted jovially to war profiteering. Don't, don't sue me, you guys. I'm just calling you out. Uh, and all the other things that our society is currently really, really negatively and toxically addicted to. You know? Uh... <clears throat> And I literally, shit you not, include this book for reasons that should become obvious over time. For example, some of the titles, some of the subtitles in these chapters alone. Relative Vacuum States of Consciousness and of Space. Hmm? Here's another one that was really good. The Substrate of Consciousness. Oh, here's a, here's a great quote from this book. Page 14, Contemplative Science. Principles of Contemplative Science. I highlighted this whenever I first read it. This is a real book in real life that I bought and paid for at a real bookstore and that I hope never sues me. And uh, if they ever do send me a cease and desist litter, I will proudly cease and desist. But until then, soak it up. And in the meantime, go buy this book. And if people start noticing that there's a surge in buying these books, I'll take all the credit. Thank you very much. Um, this book should be read by people. And this book should re be read by people before the end of the world. Uh, instead of after, as I jovially and chagrinedly and sarcastically will put in my fiction. There, okay? I'm asked for permission. I mean, that's why I'm asking for permission. It's that important of a book, I think. And it should be uh, read from and discussed seriously. Quote, page 14, top of page 14. Quote, This refusal to examine empirical evidence that contradicts long-held beliefs has generally been more associated with religious believers than scientists. That's a bold statement. Physicist Richard Feynman poignantly expresses the scientific ideals of skepticism and empiricism. I didn't read this to start a fight. I read this to get to the empiricism bit. Quote, Experimenters search most diligently and with the greatest effort in exactly those places where it seems most likely that we can prove our theories wrong. In other words, we are trying to prove ourselves wrong as quickly as possible because only in that way can we find progress, end quote. Footnote 29. I would, could, should, would dig up the footnote. 
The author goes on, continues to say, Unfortunately, today's cognitive scientists do not seem eager to search in those places where their materialistic theories may be proved wrong. Insofar as their research pertains to the origins of the psyche, they seem single-mindedly committed to pursuing only those kinds of investigations that will reinforce their beliefs. To find variable alternatives to the scientific orthodoxy, we might best look outside of contemporary science to the world's contemplative traditions. I turn now to a Buddhist hypothesis that is based on contemplative training and is consistent with all that is currently known about brain-mind correlations. Why? You might be asking yourself, you might be asking yourself, why the fuck would anybody in their right mind go through all the trouble of making sure that this book gets through the end of the world, past the apocalypse, so that it may be read and shared and taught to the survivors? Because I would. And that's, that's the narrative fiction that I'm writing, right? Like... At the center of the blank slate universe is this tribe of 12 men and women, six men and six women. Each of them uh, assigned the task to walk the remainder of what's left where life can still be eked out and entertain those that continue to survive, entertain the survivors, entertain the the masses as civilization rebuilds itself and quite quickly gets right into the business of overpopulating itself all over again. And also preserve these books that contain in them things that are important and that would short-circuit the need to build an ego-based, ego-trap-riddled, self-toxic, self-destructive, self-torturing, self-traumatizing society like the one we have now. You might be catching on to a theme. <laughs> 